Malawi is a land of treasures. Its famous lake is home of fish species that only live here. Its beautiful and diverse landscapes attract tourists from all over the world. But what merited it the name the Warm Heart of Africa is its biggest treasure, its people. However, it is the rapid growth of this population that puts an enormous pressure on the environment and on the building industry. At the current rate of population growth, the construction of 120,000 new houses annually is needed to accommodate them. Most of the construction is done using fired clay bricks. Traditionally, these bricks are fired in clumps using wood as fuel, thus adding to the pressure on the dwindling Malawian forest. The clump firing technology is very energy intensive. General wastage levels are very high with a lot of broken and underfired bricks. Timatogisa and Chito Mitengo Yokana Faifi, Deguti Pamitengo Faifi, more than Tikawling Santrama Agamina, Tingo Igamas maximum more ten thousand, ten thousand, they would need fifty thousand to come in. Even you, no longer come in on no giga, which for your goody Mamma Gedo out to Ama Ovonio, Ndian Kun is made to Magis and Chito, Zima Kanga de Zojeba, Ndezika Tatimango, Segatabas, City Watchers, and Dezo Salla Zambalis, Zima Kanga de Sizipia, Zima Salila, and De Oka Gonela, Mewa Gonela, De Zima Chokas Menezijaza, Zambalis, Jomasungonoka. Seeing the environmental impact of this, the Malawian government decided to act. As you know, our forest recover, our vegetation is depleting at a very alarming rate. And you can see that as a consequence of that, uh, the rivers that used to be perennial are no longer perennial. The rains that used to fall well, they are not falling well. As a matter of fact, the last two years, last year and this year, the two seasons, have spoken more eloquently about climate change and the impact of climate change that anyone, than anyone could have attempted to do so. So we are mindful of the dangers of continuing going the way we have been going. One of the key drivers of deforestation is actually brick making. I would like to assure the listening public that Government is also doing its part. We are coming up with a policy that will actually bring to an end the use of bent bricks in this country. So we have been studying, looking at various innovations, various options, and we think we are now settled on the alternatives. Within a very short space of time, we do not want to see any bent brick in this country. If it is bent, it must be bent in an eco-friendly way, like Ecomatas is doing. They're not cutting a tree to cure their bricks. And that we'll be happy with. So if we see a brick that will look like it's been uh, cured using uh, energy sources, we'll find out which source. And if it is eco-friendly, we are fine with that. Realizing the challenges, but also the great opportunities in the brick sector, a Malawian enterprise, Ecomatas, decided to invest in a brick production plant and realized in collaboration with the Indian Society for Technology and Action for Rural Advancement, Tara, an eco kiln in Lilongwe using the vertical shaft brick kiln technology. The eco kiln technology emerged as far back as the 1970s in rural China, from where it spread in the late 1990s, backed by Tara's technical support over various Asian countries such as Nepal, India, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Vietnam, and in 2009 to South Africa. In November 2013, Ecomatas launched the construction of an Ecokion pilot plant in Lilongwe. Supervised by Tara Experts, Malawian mansions constructed the eco-kiln with locally available materials. After inauguration of the kiln in January 2015, Ecomatas started the regular production in April 2015. Using mainly residues from the tobacco and cooking oil industries for firing, Ecomatas has meanwhile established one of Africa's most energy-efficient brick production. In a nutshell, uh, this is one of the best systems Malawi 
will have ever produced because we are the first uh, uh, company making such eco-friendly building materials, especially in the bricks. Now we're calling as many people as possible to invest in this. For a two shaft skin, you will, we only need about 40 to 60 million. This is inclusive of all the equipment involved to run effectively this thing. When you construct that, you invest that, your payback period is, within a short period, you have recovered your money because the demand of such high quality bricks is very high. Right now, we are just a drop in the ocean. We're focusing at spreading the technology across the country because overall, then that's the only way we can save deforestation. This is a, an, an infrastructure which is very low maintenance costs, very low. Uh, we're not using very high skilled people to operate this because it's user friendly. Ease of operation is either like if you're looking at the offloading of the bricks, you can use a manual jack, the same as the, uh, what they use for pressing the bales of tobacco. That same system. Or you can use the hydraulic jack. So it depends because the, 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 the other, the conveying systems, if your terrain is good enough, you would not need the conveyor. You just have to construct your infrastructure with regard to the slope. Then the bricks can come by wheelbarrows onto the shafts without problems. The Ekwakeon cannot be looked at only from the firing side, but requires a more holistic approach. Although the quality of the fired brick depends highly on the quality of the green brick, a large variety of green brick production technologies is suitable for bricks being fired in the Ekwakeon, such as hand modding, partly mechanized systems like the Tara brick making machine, or highly mechanized systems like extruders. An important aspect of the green brick making is the fact that most of the energy needed for firing is added to the clay as internal fuel in form of fine grains or powder of organic matter such as rice husks, residues of the tobacco industry, saw dust, coal dust or any other material suitable. I can say it's very easy, flexible to operate this machine because it needs a little attention. Even people who, can, who, who did go to school can operate this machine. So it's very, very flexible, I can say. It's a, a year through things, so when the land comes, we are using this, um, I can say, the short, as you, you, you see, to protect us from rain. Our company is uh, environmental friendly. We are not. We are. We are using everything. Even a, a broken bricks, we recycle them for uh, making another bricks, so that we can control the environment here. It's very flexible because we are using local found materials to build this plant. The core part of the Equacune technology is the vertical shaft where the firing takes place. A thick layer of selected infill insulates the firing shaft which is open at the top and the bottom. The Equakeon is a modular system in which shafts can be added as required by the entrepreneur. The Equakeon works on the basis of the counter-current principle. The bricks move from the top to the bottom of the shaft, whereas the combustion air moves up from the bottom of the shaft and exits through the flue ducts of the chimney at the top. The bricks are brought up to the loading platform by lift, conveyor, or other means. The shaft is loaded from the top with unfired bricks. Bricks are stacked in defined patterns into the shaft. External fuel in form of carefully measured core is added to the pattern to maintain the fire within the kiln. The unfired bricks move down the shaft, reaching the firing zone in the middle of the shaft where the core ignites and the actual firing takes place. The excess heat is used to preheat the bricks above, thus making maximum use of the generated heat. Bricks are then moved further down to the bottom, whilst they are cooled by the fresh combustion air moving up. At the bottom of the shaft, the unloading of fired bricks is done by lifting the trolley to the underside of the stack in the shaft. The stack is raised to release the support bars which are removed. The stack is then lowered 
until the next support bar layer is apparent and the support bars are reinserted. Whilst the support bars are holding the stack above, the bricks on the trolley are lowered to the floor and pulled out of the kiln for sorting and transport to the dispatch area. The entire kiln is covered by a light roof construction protecting the workers from sun and rain and also allowing brick firing throughout the year. The benefits of the eco kiln technology are enormous. Environmentally, energy consumption and carbon dioxide emissions is reduced by as much as 85% along with many other harmful gases and particles. Socially, workers can expect job security, ongoing skills development, and improved health and safety conditions. From an economic point of view, the EcoKiln technology requires one of the lowest investments into a continuous firing technology with high return on investment. It is low maintenance with low energy cost and low fired brick waste. Through the modular structure, it provides high flexibility as firing can easily be adapted to the market demand. Backstopped by Tara and its decades of experience in the EcoKiln technology, EcoMatters provides to entrepreneurs investing in the EcoKiln technology a service package that comprises all relevant fields such as planning of the plant layout in the kilns, establishment of bills of quantities and supervision of the construction, delivery of equipment for green brick production, brick lifting to the loading platform, trolleys and unloading devices, and troubleshooting in case required.